Rakesh here and I'm from IT Bus Team, a free open online university for students and for professionals like me. Uh, guys, I'm working on a playlist uh, for uh, Spark administration. I hope you are following our channel, which is IT Versity. Uh, this is my channel's name. And you can search it from here IT Versity, Hadoop, or IT Versity Spark will come. So, guys, I'm working on a playlist uh, in which what I'm doing is I'm um, I'm creating a standalone server on EC2 for Spark administration. So as uh, as long as I remember that last time when we were, um, uh, I executed a command for launch the servers, which was this command, and it was taking time, so I paused the video. Guys, let me tell you what actually has happened um, uh, during that time. So during that time, I was able to launch the server, and I was able to log in into the server, and I was able to do certain things into it. But then somehow my PC or my uh, my system restarted and some window upgrade happened. And after that, I was not able to um, log in into the system or launch launch the server again. And I was getting lots of errors like um, a sub process, something like this. You'll get something like this sub process dot py, some error like this. Or some error like this, you'll get sub process. I searched, searched, and searched, didn't get anything. And the, in the last, I found that there's something wrong with the SIGWIN, and I reinstalled it, didn't get it better. So, guys, what I did was I launched the server, the same file, the same command. So, I launched this command from, so I changed many things. I looked into Google, but I didn't get anything good. So, I changed the, I, I logged into Ubuntu system and then I uh, then I executed the command with some other uh, 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 cluster name which is ITversary cluster uh, and it went well and I was able to law I was able to launch a cluster so these are the logs I would like to share with you so now you can see uh, so this is my command which is like uh, key value pair it was steve that was my this is a file name zone i gave instance type as uh, uh, t2 micro the reason is guys uh, we know that aws is giving us a free subscription for a year for t2 micro and i use this resume dot resume because uh, i was in the middle of something uh, not in the middle i launched the server and in between it was hanging so i use the same server name so i use this resume and that was the main reason and guys you can see that it asked me about whether i have exported the aws class aws id this is the same and then it went all well it went you can see that it uh hdfs and packing the hadoop and it was installing the hdfs resolving s3 amazon services connecting to it and got me uh, hdfs on sleeves so I hope that uh, you now understood. Uh, you can see that uh, R Studio has been installed, and in the end, what I get was that um, my server, standalone server cluster, has been created, and this is my uh, uh, this is this particular is uh, is my uh, web UI for Spark. If I go here, Gang Ganglia is also started. I don't know more about Ganglia, but I'll figure it out what it is. So if you can go, you'll see a server with the master is 7077. This is the master node, right? And this is my server and this is my worker node. I can go here and see whether the worker is running or not. So you can see the memory is one G gigs only. So this is my server. This is my master, this is my slave or the worker in Spark. And this is my master. So total core used is one, aligned worker is one. This is my master URL and done. So guys, if you get any error, let me know. You can get SS waiting for SS test ready. So wait for your instance and uh, because it checks whether um, the status has been checked or not. Guys, uh, you can see that um, during the whole process, I wasted, I'll not say wasted, but I uh, somehow, every time I was launching a new server and my account was uh, debiting and didn't look into it correctly so do not do this mistake use instant type as 
T2 micro if you don't want to spend much money else every every learning has its own cost so that's it so guys uh, that was about launching a server i hope you will be able to launch the server so once you have launched the server i would want what you can do is you can log in into the cluster so there are many ways how you can log in into the server one is this particular command instead of this you can see Right, so you can simply call this command and you can launch the server. I think I recently have launched the server. Uh, yeah, so you can see that uh, minus k the files and login and the stuff. So, guys, try to do it uh, through Ubuntu. I request you if you do not have Ubuntu, uh, try to install it through VM, it will be good. So, now you can see that I'm able to log in and I'm able to get into the system so this is my master so if i click pwd i'm gonna root spark is a and lms l you can see all the required uh what i say uh required um, um folders are here in bin you can go and you can search for uh where am i ls minus l should work Yep, you can see submit, spark car and other stuff. Go into detail one by one, but uh, most importantly, you can see that uh, you can see that all the required commands are folders are here. About that, you can just go to root. I think P two P. Okay. Yeah and uh, if i exit from this system there's another way you can um, okay do, oh, sorry i can just write a simple exit and it will exit from the system and if you're not um, comfortable with this command what you can do is you can simply type spark ec2 get master master and itv cluster right so it should actually gives you the uh, the cluster so it will give you the okay this is my uh, this is my uh, what do i say so this is my master right so you can copy this and you can type a command like um spark ec2 uh you can do simply ssh SSH minus I ITV. Yep. So root. What happened? Why is it not working? Give me a moment. Give me a moment. So, yeah, guys, you can see that um, just by typing this command. Uh, SSH a minus ITV perm and as able to log in into the screen and exit the system. Yeah. So guys, um, uh, apart that, uh, I would like to explain one another topic of the system is that um, whenever you, uh, now it is a standalone cluster, right? And the master will be this master, and um, the port will be seven zero double seven, which is the default port master correct and you can see that uh, the slaves uh, if you have about so suppose you have seven node cluster or eight node cluster in which you have five worker ids all should be displayed here which actually gives you that okay the cluster has been configured correctly right so remember these things and um, give me a moment. and i think uh, that, that is it if you want to copy you know the command scp minus i again uh, any any file and just copy to the system uh, that will be a very simple thing and moving forward uh, there are systems guys remember this uh, now whenever uh, I'll be running a cluster uh, AWS will be charging though I'm using uh, T2 micro but suppose you are doing some M1 uh, large or some other cluster so they will be charging you for uh, every hour 
so guys uh, it is good to stop the servers and uh, it is good to if if you are not using the servers it is good to stop the servers so to stop the servers uh, you know that once you have stopped the server all the data uh, will be lost and data will not be av available to you uh, till you uh, if it is not using ebs because we are using ephemeral disks so it, the data will be lost if you will stop the server so make sure that what if you, what type of server you are configuring and these are the simple things uh, i hope um, you will be able to understand so uh, in this also in i had explained that well, so stopping instance uh, them down and makes them low uh, them lose all data on the disk which are configured with an installation of hdfs right and to stop the server it is very simple uh, spark ec2 stop itv right so then later what it will do okay it is asking me for the uh, because i re i re i'm used a new window that is why it is asking so no problem what i'll do is i'll give them the access key and i'll give them that uh, it will be a secret access key also right so stop the server so what it will do is it will stop the server for you and that is what we want right and to start the server again the key minus key minus start and the name of the server which is very simple so i hope uh, it will take some time and you would be able to see that the server would be stopped go here so it will take some time i will not be uh, showing you what will not waste your time more into it but this is very simple to know you can stop it from here as well as of now the servers are running but they will be stopped soon i uh, that i know for sure okay what i'll do is i'll pause the video for a minute and we'll back we'll be back in a minute so guys i'm back and you can see that uh, the servers are stopped and you can start the servers by using the other commands so that is it i uh, hope uh, it will be stopped here as well let me refresh it yeah stop so that is it about today uh, in the next video, I'll discuss more about standalone servers and other stuff. I hope you are following our channel on YouTube, which is iTrusty. If you are not subscribed to this channel, guys, we are doing lots of stuff for free, which actually costs a lot. Okay, so look into the videos. All the stuff which we are doing here is latest stuff. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much.